I serve as the executive director for the Center for Genomic Sciences. And our primary mission is to understand um, how bacteria cause disease, specifically how bacteria cause chronic disease. We've been doing this type of research for nearly 20 years. We started at the University of Pittsburgh in 1990 and then moved uh, to the Allegheny Singer Research Institute in 1997. Acute bacterial infections and chronic bacterial infections are very different. Acute bacterial infections are caused by planktonic bacteria, that is bacteria that are swimming freely. Each bacteria is essentially a single-celled organism. Chronic infections, for the most part, are caused by bacterial biofilms, and the bacterial biofilm is, in essence, a multicellular organism, so that each individual bacteria within the biofilm is analogous to each individual cell in your body, and so that they are actually functioning as a single, single organism. And it's the adoption of the biofilm mode of growth that provides for what we say chronicity or persistence. And so when you get an acute infection anywhere in your body, um, when you have a medical device implanted, there is a finite risk that some of those planktonic bacteria that are associated with acute infection will land on the implanted medical device. And if they do, they can form a biofilm on that device. Uh, and then you end up with a chronic infection um, resulting from that. You can kind of think of bacteria as having a life cycle um, because once the um, bacteria are on the device as a biofilm, there's always a certain percentage of the biofilm bacteria that are shed as planktonic bacteria. And we call these showers. And so when a shower of planktonic bacteria occurs, then that can cause an acute exacerbation. So you go from chronic to acute, chronic to acute. Now the acute you can treat with antibiotics. So you can treat somebody and you'll stop the acute infection, but you won't get rid of the nidus, the, the mother biofilm, which keeps spewing them out over time. And so that's why if you hear about somebody who has something like a central line or something like that, and, you know, a catheter like in their, in their vein, and they become episodically febrile, it means when they, when they become febrile, they have a fever, that means they've had a planktonic shower. You treat the, the planktonic shower with antibiotics, they, they then it kills the, the planktonic bacteria, but the mother biofilm stays intact. Um, so they're no longer acutely ill, but they still have that chronic infection, and that will, chronic infection will produce subsequent showers again. So the only way to actually stop that showering is to take the device out, pull the catheter out, and start over again. There are two different ways, basically, that a medical device that's in someone's body can become infected. The first way is associated actually with the procedure that, that put the device in, so that there was a break in sterility. I mean, generally we try to do surgery under sterile conditions, but it's not perfect. And so at some low percentage, um, bacteria will be introduced uh, into the wound site, you know, at the time of infection. And so the, these are called, you know, um, you know, ac acute again um, infections because it happens um, with with the surgery. The second type is one that ha where the infection occurs much much later. It can occur years later when somebody has uh, some sort of a um, what we call septic or bacteremic effect, where for some reason there's bacteria in the bloodstream. So for perhaps um, you had a, a dental procedure or something like that. Um, and if you disrupt um, the, 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 the biofilm bacteria, you know, that are associated, you know, with, with gum disease, it's very easy for them to get into the blood. Uh, so essentially you have a planktonic shower and, and then those planktonic bacteria, if some of them alight on, you know, the, the, the plates in somebody's spine or their artificial, you know, joint in, the, you know, in their leg, uh, then they can become they're, they can have their implant infected years after it was put in. And so that those types of infections, those late occurring infections, 
are by no are, are not because of a result in loss of sterility, you know, during the surgical process. So basically, if somebody you know is out more than you know six months from the time of surgery um, before they have any symptoms, then it's a fairly good guess that the infection occurred post-surgically as opposed to intraoperatively. Bacterial biofilms are very difficult um, for the body's immune system to get rid of, and that's why they can persist. The major difference uh, between planktonic bacteria and a biofilm bacteria is that the biofilm bacteria are embedded in a matrix. So they actually produce a matrix that they're living inside of. So it's very analogous to our bone cells producing a bone matrix that they live inside. Okay, And so they're inside this matrix and even if the your, your body's immune cells uh, can recognize the bacteria, they can't actually get to the bacteria because they're inside the matrix. Um, in fact, a lot of the inflammation and a lot of the damage that's done for people who have in people who have biofilm infections is actually done by the host's own immune system inflammatory response because it keeps trying to attack the biofilm and it can't do it very effectively. Um, so it actually causes damage to its own tissue. This is actually what happens in cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis, the, the fibrosis in the lung doesn't occur because of the bacteria. It occurs because the neutrophils are continuing, continually trying to attack the biofilm uh, and instead, they attack the host tissue. Bacterial biofilms can be monospecific, that is made up of a single species of bacteria. They can be polymicrobial, meaning they're made up of multiple bacterial species. They can also be polykingdom, um, where you have um, bacteria and fungi um, forming biofilms together. It is our belief now that the vast majority of chronic bacterial infections are biofilms. Uh, whether we're talking about infections that occur on the respiratory mucosa, such as otitis media, which is the middle ear disease, the most common disease uh, that children get for which they have to see a doctor, for which they receive antibiotics, for which they have surgery. Um, we have shown, I think, quite conclusively uh, that this disease, middle ear disease or otitis media, is a biofilm disease. Similarly, we've shown that many other chronic bacterial infections of the um, respiratory mucosa, which includes, you know, the the um, the lungs and, and the airways, uh, are associated uh, with with biofilm infections. Some of the work we've done directly here, some uh, in collaboration uh, with our colleagues. But a short list of the um, diseases which we're fairly comfortable are associated with biofilms now in, you know, in, the, in the respiratory tree would include adenoiditis, uh, tonsillitis, chronic uh, rhinosinusitis, um, certain forms of pneumonia such as associated with um, uh, cystic fibrosis as we talked about earlier and certainly a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, called COPD. One of the things that I would recommend to any patient um, who is going to have um, any sort of um, procedure done um, if they already have um, an implantable device anywhere in their body is that before the procedure is done uh, that they prophylactically take antibiotics to prevent you know a planktonic shower to prevent what we call bacteremia which is simply bacteria in the blood um, you know you, if you get a few bacteria in the blood it doesn't necessarily make mean you're going to be sick but if you have a place for them to land an artificial part in your body then that can ultimately make you sick so whereas I don't think that people should overdose with antibiotics. If you're going to have a procedure, okay, and, and you already have some sort of, you know, prosthetic device, then I think it's 
very wise, you know, to be treated prophylactically with antibiotics before you have that procedure. That's one thing you, you can really do to cut down the risk, you know, of, of developing a, a chronic bile film infection. Um, the, the other thing that I'd like, you know, um, patients to know is that because there is now a community of scientists which recognize that chronic infections are associated with biofilms and biofilms act profoundly differently than planktonic bacteria, is that it's only a matter of time before we do have effective therapies uh, for biofilms. 